the default channel groupings inside of GA4 can be adjusted. And it's a great way to make sure your reports are matching up with how you structure your channels and how you want to see the data. Uh, so first we'll look at just the standard default channel grouping. So if we go into the reports uh, and then go to generate leads or acquisition, we're going to go to the traffic acquisition report. Now this will show the default channel grouping right here. Um, so you can see what the channels are, how much traffic you have and all your metrics. This drop down menu does allow you to switch to other uh, options. So source medium campaign, you have a few options there, but ultimately what we want to do as a first step is look at the channels and start to see if there's any changes we want to make based on our own marketing. So what I like to do is hit this plus sign and add source medium. So we'll do session source medium. And then we could see how these channels are breaking down. So organic search, we see Google or organic. That's good. We see unassigned traffic, not set. So this is worth investigating. If you see this in your account, uh, something's happening to make your traffic not be attributed to any channel. In this case, we found there were some issues with email uh, marketing. So we're actually able to add UTMs and fix that uh, going forward. So if you ever see unassigned, it's worth investigating. Sometimes you'll see unassigned and instead of not set, you'll see a source medium that Google doesn't recognize. So that's a great example of if you see that, you'll want to make sure you're moving that uh, unassigned traffic into one of the buckets that Google gives. You could also create your own uh, channel group, which we'll get into uh, shortly here. So I'm going to scroll down organic video, YouTube. That looks correct. Uh, AdWords PPC here. So this is getting marked as paid other. This I would like to see in paid search. So for this example, we're going to move this into the paid search group. Everything else here looks good. So um, if we go to the admin section now and under data settings, we'll see channel groups down here. And then this, if you want to click into this, you'll see kind of just the standard channels that Google has. What we're going to do though, is we're going to actually create a new channel grouping. Uh, you can name this whatever you want. Uh, I'm just going to say new for now. You could write a description if you want to explain what you did. And ultimately what we're going to do is instead of that paid other, which was where Google uh, ads was getting lumped into, what we're going to do is uh, add a condition here and we don't want to do end. So we want to make sure we do or that way this matches properly. And what we're going to do is source contains and we'll have to get that. I believe it was AdWords. We'll click apply. Uh, it may have been medium, so I'll double check that, but we just want to double check what that one was. Now what we're going to see is we have Google standard option, or if we see the word AdWords in the source, um, that will also count as paid search. So I'm going to save this. And again, it might've been medium. So we'll double check that in a second, but that was now been adjusted. Uh, you could also add a new channel and reorder. So the order is important here. Google is going to go down this list, almost like a checklist and check to see if the traffic is from this channel. And then if not, it moves to the next one. So if you had a channel that matches uh, a certain traffic source, it'll stop there and won't get to the next one. So you do have to make sure these are in the right order um, and the rules are defined. So if we go to add a new channel, in this case, um, again, you can name the channel anything you want. Um, we had one example where we had offline traffic from a TV source. And so we'll just call this one TV and we'll click add. And then same thing here. We really just need to define some kind of rule here that will determine what matches here. Source medium tend to be some of the best options for this. You could potentially use campaign name, but I typically like using source or medium. And then if you're not tagging the URLs property with U UTM links, that could be another thing to look at, but uh, we'll cover UTM tracking in another video. Uh, so the really the first thing here would be using source or medium. So we'll use source, um, or we'll actually use medium for this one. We'll say contains, we'll put this as TV and we'll save that. We'll save the channel. So now after you've saved your grouping here, you'll see we have this new channel grouping, but we want to actually use this. So if we go back to the reports and go back to our traffic acquisition report, it's still going to be set to default channel grouping, but you'll notice our new one appears in the drop down menu. So now we have the ability to click on that and actually use our new channel grouping. And again, for example purposes, we kind of went through a few scenarios, but obviously you'll want to tailor this to exactly your channels. 
I found out of the box, Google does seem to do a better job with uh, attributing traffic sources to the right channel uh, compared to universal analytics, but you still need to do some customization uh, quite often. So one little detail that we've been using, if you want to actually make this the default, and when you load up your report, it doesn't start on the default channel grouping, but it actually starts on the one uh, that you define, you can click this pencil icon to customize this report. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to our dimensions and see how this one here says default. We're gonna change this new channel that we made to be the default. So we can set that and apply. Now you'll see um, right here, we're gonna save this. We're gonna say changes to the current report. You could do a new one if you wanted to, but we're just gonna use the current one. And this is a big advantage of GA4 versus Universal Analytics is you're actually able to customize all of the standard reports in the navigation on the left. Um, you're not locked into just what Google has set up. You can really tailor these. Another common change I typically make is moving conversions all the way to the left here. So instead of having to scroll every time to see conversions, we can actually move that so it shows up first or really any metric you care about most, you could change the order. Uh, but now you'll see we have our new channel. So if we switch over to another report, and then head back to this acquisition report. By default, now it loads our new channel grouping right away since we set that as the default dimension. And if we wanna get default channel grouping back, we could always cycle through and go back to that. Uh, but that's really helpful. Once you've dialed in your default channel group settings, actually making that be the uh, default in this report is pretty key. So you don't have to use this drop down menu every time you log into the report. So that's really all there is to it. I think the bulk of the work tends to be uh, on actually defining what source mediums you want to go into what bucket or potentially creating a new channel and defining what the rules are there. But once you have that mapped out, we typically like to use a Google Sheet or a Google Doc to map out the channels we want to see, the rules for each one, and then it's just a matter of going in and implementing it and then updating your reports so you could start using uh, that grouping.